I like to venture out into the unknown. There's a sense of wanting to know what's on the other side of the mountain. This has never been easy. This has always been the most difficult thing I've ever done. It always seems to get harder. Gotta be with me. I dreamed of what mountains look like all my life. I grew up in nature. My home was built on the back of a forest land, and I grew up wearing no shirt and playing in the creeks and in the woods. Well, David was my son, but he was fun. And we shared the outdoors from gardening to hunting and to primitive camping. And everywhere we went, he saw the whole world. He had to be in command to look at everything. My wife, Rebecca, thought she was going to have number three, which was our, our son, Zachary. My brother was much younger than myself, and we were in different places. And uh, so I didn't... Uh, really grow with my brother. Zachary, you know, he was just an interesting intellectual child, probably smarter than the peer that he was being raised with. <laughs> and during his teenage years, I went to college, and so I didn't see him as much. I was a part of uh, Indiana State University, and I was interested in the earth sciences, and there was a geology class that was offered, a field course in Colorado. I was immediately excited and hooked. Colorado was something I dreamed of. Do it. I thought that was a great goal. I, th I think he's been led to do that. When I went to the mountains for the very first time, I was amazed by their beauty. Uh, they were even more than what I expected. The first mountain I ever climbed was Mount California. Up to California, 13,855 feet. And when I got on top of the mountain, I was immediately moved by its, by its beauty and by the views that we could see, and amazed um, by the grandness of it. And that's when I fell to my knees and began to, to pray. That was the beginning of my love for the mountains. It's kind of strange. You can yell and hear your echo about five times. After college, I went back to Colorado to climb the neighboring mountains. In 1999, I climbed Mount Lindsay, and in 2000, to climb Mount Blanco. This is a panoramic view, the San Cristo mountain range. Now I get to sign my name, my address, and I get to put uh, a statement on here. And I'll read some of the comments up here. One person said, this is bitching. I agree with that one. And uh, the last person here uh, said that uh, Jesus saves. That's a neat statement, so uh, now I get to put mine. It was hard to get out there. It's so far away. Uh, it's, you know, we're, we're looking at 1,200 mile drive from Indianapolis to the mountain. Work was a part of my life, and yeah, it's something I always wanted to go back to, but it was just un unreachable. We're really remodeling this house. I didn't return back to the mountains until my brother passed away. Um, it was an accident that happened at work, uh, and he tripped on a skid, of all things, with boxes, and he broke several ribs. So he checked himself in at the hospital and said that he, he wasn't feeling right at all. And he told me, like, look, I fell and I broke my rib. And he left his shirt and it was really kind of, you could see it, that it was broken. He was in bad shape. Well, at, at first, you know, you assume that he's just going to get better. You know, he's in the hospital. But the doctor came forward and said, quite frankly, it's, uh, we don't know if we can help him. I, I panicked um, because there's nothing the doctors could do, so what can we do? Um, and uh, instantaneous, I ran, I ran to the nearest priest and um, begged him to come immediately on the spot, come right now. Please sit down with my brother. 
confess him and and um, essentially give him last rites. As a child, he was so much younger, I, I was just interested in my own life. And so while Zachary was dying, I felt guilty for that because I didn't fully bond. And his brother asked him, can you climb a mountain for me? I told Zachary that I would climb a mountain for him. I'll get there, I'm gonna to pray to God. I'm going to go to the mountains and pray for you. We were looking for the miracle. We were hoping that um, he would wake up anew and he would be fine. But unfortunately, what was discovered was he had a splintered rib that permeated the pulmonary tissue and he literally bled to death internally. God will be merciful upon your soul, Zachary. I love you very much. David is part of our church and has been part of our church for many years now. I met him 20 years ago when I came to be a parish priest at St. Nicholas Church in Indianapolis, Indiana. I prayed in my home, I prayed with my mom, my dad, but I worried about my brother and I worried about his soul. In the Orthodox Christian Church, when someone dies, we pray as if we are worried for them. In other words, continuously we are in prayer for their soul. David had an urge to go up to the highest point he could reach in order to talk to God and ask God to have mercy on his brother and establish him in paradise. That's the first thing David said after the services is, I have to go to the mountain to pray for my brother. I heard about the unfortunate uh, death of David's brother and how he decided to do a mountain climbing trip in uh, his honor. It was surprising, but uh, most of ancient civilizations and religions, they had supernatural religious experiences on high places, on the top of the mountains. If I could get up there, I could pray directly into the ear of God. Climbing Mount Blanca, it was the first mountain that came to my mind. It was considered a special place. Mount Blanca is the tallest mountain in the Santa de Cristo mountain range, which translate to the blood of Christ spans from the middle of Colorado to New Mexico. This region is where the local Indian tribes, Spanish settlers, and the Anglo-White Americans converged during the 17th and the 18th century. The Navajo Indians called Mount Blanca the sacred white mountain of the east, and the Ute tribes in the area consider it holy as well. Mount Blanca is sacred and special for many denominations, so I wanted to go there to pray for Zachary. It had been 10 years since I'd climbed a mountain, and I knew that they were large, and I was a bit frightened. I had tried to find people to go with me to climb, um, but I didn't have any luck. Probably about a month after Zachary passed. My wife had mentioned, well, why don't you ask your brother-in-law, Ronco? Just out of blue, he just asked me to go with him, and I know how, how much it meant for him to be there for his brother, and I was not going to let him go by himself. I was very relieved to find out that Ronco uh, not only would go with me and pray, but I was relieved that Ronco wanted to go. I've never been out west. I honestly did not know what to expect. Halfway through the trip, I realized that it's going to take us 20 hours to get there. <laughs> I love nature. 
and being in that region of the Santa de Cristo mountain range was already healing. A natural animal in his wild habitat. Good morning, Ronco. Morning, Dad. I remember packing my bag and I didn't even include a jacket because I was thinking, you don't need a jacket in August, you know, anywhere. It's hailing on us now. We had to fight through really hard weather that was, that would, you know, almost felt like that mountain did not want us to be there. The clouds have covered up Blanca several times, so we're planning on rain. We know that, so we want to try the best we can uh, when we get up on top. Got any major words before you go up? <sighs> Not really, just excited to get this done and over with and so you can go back. All right. Home. <laughs> it's once in a lifetime opportunity to do this, so. We'll see you guys uh, on the way up the trail. All right, let's go, man. We started off the climb really happy and excited. Partizan, 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 Partizan. 10,000 feet right here. Whew. A couple more thousand to go. We'll be up. This is the highest elevation of all the Rockies. That's where we're going. I thought, oh, we'll be done in a couple hours and, you know, we'll get to the top. It'll be nice and, and you know, and easy. And that proved not to be the truth. It's extremely foggy. We can barely see more than 300, 400 feet. What do you think of this? <laughs> Uh, it sucks. <laughs> is it rough? It is rough. <laughs> Sleep in my butt. Ronco had never climbed a mountain before, and it was rough on him. Clouds are pretty bad. See the clouds moving in fast. When those clouds started moving in, I started thinking that maybe this is not the best idea. Excited to get up there? Uh, not really. David was telling me, yeah, it's doable, it's really easy, all you have to do is just follow the trail and do it. And, you know, you go there with that mindset, and then it turns out to be really, really hard. You can't breathe, that, and you have rain coming down, and clouds, and you can't see anything in front of you, and you're trying to climb these slippery rocks. It looked impossible. There was no turning back. The clouds are so powerful. That right now we have virtually now less than 100 foot visibility. The clouds have come up and over us, and it's nice to be able to see a view of your where you're going, a destination. We we don't have one, so now we're really truly freely climbing. How is it, Ronco? Stuff, man. Stuff. Look at this. Just rocks around us. Is that summit? We've got, uh, this is the fall summit. We'll be on top of this, it's falls. And then there'll be one more. That'll be it. Why is it called fall summit? Because it's falls, so it looks like the summit. Camera in the hand. The top of the mountain. Getting to the top of Blanca was the hardest physical and emotional experience that I've experienced in my life. Once we stepped on top of Mount Blanca, I felt how special these mountaintops and tops of these summits really are. Um, there's definitely a connection that's felt there. But I did it. I didn't think I was going to do it, but it's so special. It took everything out of me to get up here, and uh, I'm glad I did it. I'm glad we did this for Zach. Long live Zachary's uh, spirit. I hope that he has a wonderful ascent and a fair judgment. I love my brother Zachary forever and ever.
we laid the prayers uh, up on, onto a stone, and I brought out uh, an icon of um, uh, the ladder of defined ascent, and we began to pray. When we lit the candles, he was uh, literally in tears the whole entire time, but he knew that this helped Zach's soul get into a better place. I had prayed what I needed to pray for Zachary, and I opened my eyes and the clouds had fallen below us. We are so above the clouds. It felt like our prayers were heard. It was so beautiful on top of the mountain. Our emotions were aligned. We started feeling great and we could see the whole nature kind of being in tune with our emotions. <laughs> I definitely did feel closer to God. I felt that spiritual connection, which in a sense made me realize how small I am in this grand universe of things and made me feel really humble. I didn't feel alone. I had a family member with me now. I gained a brother-in-law to be more like a brother. And I said, that was, that was amazing, right, Bronco? Is that just me or did you, was that a powerful a prayer? Or did you feel that? I said, yes, you know, I, I was, being honest with him. Bronco, do you, do you think we ought to bring people up here and do that and bring people to the mountain and to pray? And uh, we both agreed that this experience would be worth sharing. We came back from Blanca and um, started talking about our experience and soon enough it sparked interest. <laughs> I began to ask people if they would be interested to go into nature and uh, mountain climbing and then praying. The next year we had Deacon Marco expressing his interest in going and also Dylan Jensen, our choir director. I had never done such a trip before, uh, so it was some kind of a challenging idea for me. So Dave, uh came up to me at coffee hour after liturgy one day. He's like, you look like a strong guy. I'm like, reasonably so. You want to go on this trip? Yes. The four of us, Ronco, Dylan, Deacon, Marco, and myself, would climb Mount Lindsay. David had been up that mountain. He was the one taking us up, but we were all kind of new my first experience climbing a mountain. I'd been primed for a trip like this since, you know, I was in college, um, and I just never had the opportunity. Everybody in the group had the role. David was definitely a leader of the group because of his knowledge and experience. I'm pretty energized right now, pretty pumped up. We're gonna go up to Mount California Saddle. I was his assistant and, in a sense, motivational uh, speaker for the group. Rocco's a very cool guy and funny. I've seen some cool things with that flag in your outfit. It's awesome. Uh, thank you. Dylan was definitely somebody who documented the whole trip for everybody and um, took notes and made sure that every, everything was recorded accordingly. Do you, do you recommend this at all for anyone? Yes, very much so. It's beautiful and uh, something my, my soul needed. Good. Come out here in the woods. So you saw a bear this morning? Yes. So a couple bears last night? And of course, Deacon Marco was a spiritual leader uh, of the group. As a trustworthy guide of feelings. Uh, I always loved uh, going to nature. But up until then, I never had uh, such a close connection. And ultimately, through that, I felt closer to God. Further away you go from human civilization, the more beautiful does it get. It's Dylan, a... any famous last words? I wish I'd never started smoking again. <laughs> All right. Our goal was to summit Mount Lindsay and to uh, gather as a group and pray on top of a mountain. 
It was rough. Um, I was sore. I was in pain. I wasn't expecting the um, effects of altitude to be what they were. It looked pretty impossible when we were down at the bottom, but you know, once you start climbing, it starts making sense. You know? It's hard. Probably harder than anything else I've done in my life, but it's, it's worth it. When we as a group summited the mountain, it was an accomplishment. As we were able to see an open horizon all around us, it also opened a new horizon before our spiritual eyes. I think in that first climb, we established the pattern of services we did at the top, but we ended up saying the Akathist, uh, glory to God for all things. We'll pour an incense during the Akathist service. We'll sprinkle holy water, say a prayer, just asking for God's blessing on the land, on us, our families, our community. On these mountain climbing trips, I still continuously pray for my brother. The trip felt so profound. I felt really moved on that first trip uh, out with Dave to Mount Lindsay. When we summited Mount Lindsay, David and I felt like the seed that we planted with Zachary had taken a root and started to grow. Deacon Marco and Dylan did really well. And I really saw how they were a part of this group. It was exciting. And this would be the beginning of the St. Nicholas Mountain Men. Once I was out there, um, I was hooked. Other men from the parish found out about this group. 2012, we would climb Mount Blanca with uh, George Seat. I think they had just done their first trip, and then he found out that, that I was interested in climbing. Then we did a couple climbs after that. David talked to me about it, and it's like it was a perfect find because I always was interested uh, in doing something much more. Climbing to me, once you get out there, uh, especially when you start getting at the elevation above the tree line, you really start to feel the, the spiritual uh, nature of climbing. All of these trips are accompanied by spiritual preparation. We're not just a mountain climbing club. There's a, probably a bunch of those out there. The unique thing about this is the combination of a spiritual journey along with the physical aspect. The bond between us grew stronger and stronger after each trip. And uh, before you know it, you're, you're all like family. <laughs> Dylan? You just did your fifth 14-er. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. What the mountain climbers of St. Nicholas Church are doing is reviving the ancient practice of pilgrimages to pray to God. Everything was going well until we climbed Mount Humboldt. Uh, quickly things can turn in the mountains. You're never guaranteed 100% safety. And, it, and I think that's part of the reason, kind of why we do it. The climb up wasn't really bad, except the weather started to change. So we're, uh, we've got a big storm blowing in, and we are actually bunkering in the side of a mountain up at how many feet? Uh, 13,600 foot. We're crawling in a hole in a crevice so we can now wade out from the rain and lightning. We were on the summit and we had finished our prayers. Dark clouds had blown in quick. And within minutes, the entire sky was dark gray. Dylan is signing in. The Serbian Orthodox Mountain Climbing Club, the Orthodox St. Nicholas Club for uh, Indianapolis in our diocese on top of Hambolt Mountain, 14,068 foot. 
of a sudden I, I heard Dave shouting out loud. Get down! Get down! Stack him here! Get up the side! Get up the side! Get up the side! Get up the side! Now! just have to run as quickly as possible from the sun. No! Get down! That is a critical time period to come back down quickly. Get over this ridge and get down! Two dangers here. The lightning was surrounding us. It was above us. It was to the right, left, and forward, and backward. It was all around us. It was serious, and, and you hear about all of these poor climbers that, that end up getting struck by lightning on, on the mountain. Um, and I didn't want to be a statistic. And we prayed really hard that God would have mercy upon us as individuals and that we would make it down safely. We got stuck in the first big storm that would uh, dump around four inches of snow and ice on us. We got down to camp after being hunkered down, waiting out cloud to cloud lightning. We were glad to be alive and uh, get back to lower ground. You did feel very, very small up there and, and very mortal. Unlike the physical mountain where you reach a top and from there on you head back down, the spiritual mountain is a mountain where you reach the peak in order to climb up to another peak and another peak and another peak. It's very much a continuous journey. It was a good experience to come close to death. Humboldt was dangerous but made me realize that what we were doing for God, for Zachary, could be better. Zachary probably didn't know that he was going to die. So maybe he didn't have time to do reconciliation and to repent and to, to change. That storm was a reminder into what we were actually doing. That particular trip gave a certain weight to the whole thing. I began to believe that we needed to go to the mountain to serve a holy divine liturgy. Divine liturgy is most important service of all the services. Divine liturgy is a thanksgiving service, worshiping God and actually uniting heaven and earth. David wanted to take this service, usually performed in a church building, to the mountain because then it would be served in the midst of all creation. The Holy Divine Liturgy would be the ultimate prayer to glorify God. For the Divine Liturgy, one needs a priest, the faithful, bread and wine. Those are the basics. I had written letters uh, to several priests. I had made phone calls to priests asking would they consider to serve a Holy Divine Liturgy on the mountain with us. Although we had positive feedback, we didn't have a priest. I received a phone call from Marko Bojevic. He said, I think we may have your priest that you've been looking for, David. I said, well, who's that? And I said, are you becoming, are you getting ordained as a priest? He says, God willing. The ordination of priest Marko Bojevic was an excellent and awesome event. I came to Jackson in the beginning of 2017. 
I wanted to join the mountain climbing group and be part of this special service and I made it a priority to be there. We all decided we needed to go back to Mount Blanca. To Blanca. That that's where we would serve the Divine Liturgy. <laughs> After I have received the news that we're going to be able to have a liturgy on Blanca, I was definitely excited. Um, I felt that it was a great progression of what David and I have started years ago as just two guys climbing, and now all of a sudden we do have a priest with us who's going to serve a liturgy um, at the same site that David and I originally climbed um, seven years ago. Serving a liturgy on top of a mountain is something new to all of us, for that matter, who are part of the Orthodox Church here in America. We have a lot to do. <laughs> We have a dinner, a meeting with all of the guys, uh, kind of give them an overview of what's going to happen uh, on the trip. The guys are very, very excited. <laughs> you know, because we're different people and got different things going on in our life, like, you know, Ronco got married, had a kid, George has, has his family, and, you know, hard to see him. And then I'm really excited to see Father Marco because he moved to California. I mean, I'm honestly just looking forward to getting back on the road and spending time with my friends, re-establishing that connection, that relationship that I had with that same group of people. Our friendship is sort of focused on the trip. This is our chance to hang out. We're putting the band back together. <laughs> so you're saying 15 to 18 meals. I suggested that uh, just as in any church we have icons or holy images, we should make banners to create a church on the mountain. I sew, and David asked me to do that for him. I was very excited to make some type of a contribution. So we've got uh, we've got our church. Yeah. This trip is not a simple mountain climbing quest for you to get on top of the mountain as people do and pride yourself with the fact that you climbed so high. This venture is quite different. The height is the inexhaustible height. It is the spiritual height. For this reason, fast. For this reason, you will pray. For this reason, by serving the Divine Liturgy, you will be able to bless the whole country we live in and the communities which you are members of. May God be with you from the moment you start the trip. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father Jagan's speech and his blessing was inspirational and motivational as well. I'm excited, I'm ready to go, and I'm ready for this adventure. Hey guys, congratulations, this is it. This is it. Cheers. Got it, Cheers. Julie. It's a safe trip and a safe return for safe all you trip, guys. Safe return. Pack's ready to go. Uh, I've packed it, unpacked it several times. <laughs> What time is it? It is time to leave. Yep, we gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta make it to like it's almost nine o'clock. As you're driving along, probably the only thing that comes to your mind is when will Kansas end?
nice to see you. Likewise. How was your flight? It was good, it was good. All right. When you see your first mountain as you're coming into Colorado, at that point you're just kind of awestruck. You know, finally come to the realization that, you know, you're about ready to take on a, a great journey. This is your first time in Colorado, right? Exactly. First time in Colorado, first time actually hiking up a mountain at this altitude. So it's going to be a journey. My name is Adam Arsic. Everyone knows me as Bato. Bato, you know, in Serbian, means brother. So once they started the mountain climbing trip five, six years ago, I've always wanted to go. And this year, I've had the chance to. Are you uh, scared? I'm a little. I'm not really scared now, but I'm a little bit of. Uh, just don't know what to expect for you know. So. You excited? I'm excited. Very excited. Are you happy to be here? I'm very happy to be here. All right, that's good. <laughs> Little, uh, little concerned that we're getting a little behind schedule, but we're gonna be starting out under the hot sun, which can uh, slow us down a little bit, but I think we're all in good shape. What we're trying to do is, uh, Father Marco is also bringing all of his uh, holy vestments and things for the church to, to say a liturgy. So we're trying to see how we can di distribute all of that to, to everyone to help contribute to take something up, because mm -hmm. there's quite a bit to take up for the liturgy. You know, the weight of the pack is is gonna make you or break you on the, especially on a trail like Lake Como. We got the tent, we got the mat, inside we have the sleeping bag, food and all the necessities aside. I gotta say it's probably pushing around fifty pounds. I'm definitely not excited at all about the actual hike. <laughs> the last few times it took us six, seven hours to hike it, so <laughs> and imagine with a camera crew. It's probably going to take us <laughs> a little more. It's going to be a journey. Guys, if you take a peek, Mount Blanc is the tallest that you see. And that's essentially what's brought us here. How are you? How are you? Thank you for pulling over. Hey, um, were you able to summit uh, Blanca? It's really challenging. Yeah, is it bad? It's got loose rock everywhere, and uh, if you're in the wrong place, you get beamed. And, and even with a helmet on. Really? Yeah. A rock's probably going somewhere in the range of 50 miles an hour. It came about that close to her shoulder. Okay. So. Well, thank you guys very much for your time. Good yeah. luck. Have a good day. Well, you hear that? They didn't like that much. Mm -mm. We're here. So we're entering uh, the Lake Como Trailhead, and uh, we're going to start ascending from the west point of the mountain, and we're going to take about a eight-mile hike above Lake Como, around 11,000 feet. All right, guys. Let's back them up. For oh Lord Jesus Christ our God, come also and be with us, climb with us, be in us, with us, next to us, that we may ascend unto you, together with thy co-originate Father and good and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen.
because for whatever reason, we often get a late start, so the sun's beating down on us, and it's usually pretty hot. And you're going, oh, okay, why am I doing this again? <laughs> you start to question your uh, sanity. Um, you know, why don't I like to take vacations where I sit by a pool? I'm a little nervous due to the fact that this will be the first mountain I've ever climbed in my life, but I have high hopes that I will be able to climb it. This is the hardest usual route to get to the top. And there's periods of drudgery. But I guess anything that's worthwhile in life is difficult. God willing, the weather is cooperative. I really hope that the skies will remain clear for when we do the liturgy. When we dropped into that valley and crossed the stream, I mean, that's sort of a halfway uh, mark for the hike. It was pretty gruesome, and it was probably the hardest physical challenge that I've endured in my life. Look backpacks, man. <sighs> Beautiful. There she is. We're close. It didn't change my brother. It was my first time out there hiking in, and under that sky, it was a very overwhelming moment. We're, uh, we're getting close, everybody. I am always moved when I see that peak of Mount Blanco. Seeing the peak of the summit was sort of scary. Uh, if you guys are looking for your headlights, we'll be looking soon, because it's about to get dark. that one. Maybe a little farther into the left. Keep going. Looking forward to laying in your tent. Oh yeah, looking forward to a hot dinner, <laughs> honestly. It was tough, but we made it there as a group. I didn't realize we would climb that high. For that day, we climbed like 11 and a half hours. I was very exhausted, but I liked it. Enjoyed it a lot. It is uh, 4th of July today. Today in camp was just a day to chill, and I think we needed it. That long hike uh, took a lot out of everybody. You know, just a day to kind of relax, get used to the altitude, play a bit. People fished, you know, just hung out, uh, talked to each other, and enjoyed the scenery. It was great. This mountain climbing trip happened during a Lenten period, and uh, that meant we had to practice a specific diet. We refrain from eating meat products, dairy products. Um, some are more strict than others. This is a little bit less strict of one, so fish is permitted. Come here, get your fish. I got one last piece. Here, have this fish sandwich. Glory be to God. That physical aspect of fasting just helps us be focused. We abstain from something that is good for the sake of something even 
better. There's this amazing spiritual aspect and there's also just, you know, a guy's trip, which is great. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Let him go, guys, let him go. <laughs> Happy birthday, America. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy 4th of July, guys. Yeah, I got something to say. This is one of the neatest experiences of my entire life, having a group of men going up and to uh, do something like this. This is a really neat experience. Yes, we got uh, eight, nine hours of sleep. We're gonna get packed up and we're gonna go climb a big mountain. Today is the day that we, uh, God willing, have liturgy below Blanca. It's going to take us a few hours to get up there. The service itself is pretty lengthy. When you begin the liturgy, you need to finish the liturgy. And because of that, it, it's best to have some sort of protection. It would be ideal if they could find a cave in which to serve the Divine Liturgy because it is a protection for the holy gifts from the wind, from the rain, from the sun. The table was for the altar, for the liturgy. I'm not sure how I was uh, elected to uh, carry the table that was used for the altar, but I considered it an honor. We will not be eating anything or drinking anything until we reach the top of the mountain in the cave and have a service. Is that, is that where you, like, how do you feel physically right now? Physically, I feel okay. I had some liquids last night to drink. However, this morning, we have had nothing. So, I'll just take my time and hopefully everything will go as planned. We willingly and voluntarily decided as a group that we would together fast, also from water, to climb this mountain so that we could achieve our goal to serve the Holy Divine Liturgy. This is a part of our faith, offering good suffering for the Lord, giving of ourselves, giving up from our wants to receive His grace. The most important thing about the mountain itself where we're going, it's a scramble. What a scramble means is there's going to be a part where the trail itself begins to disappear. And so what I want you to remember is to not roll rocks. Do not roll rocks. I'll say it again. Don't move rocks because you'll make an avalanche. And when you're stepping, you have to think about where you're positioning to balance your step. So take your time and be careful, but don't move rocks. We hope to have the liturgy in a cave beneath the summit of Blanca. Uh, we haven't been there yet. We know approximately where it's at. So, you know, there's some details there that we're going to need to work out as soon as we get up. There has been a lot of snow in these mountains uh, this past winter, and uh, the cave might be hidden. It might be covered in snow, it might be covered in rockfall but we don't know for sure if we are going to find it. David and Dylan had some maps that indicated that there were some old uh, cave entrances I was reading up, trying to remember where this cave was from virtually 20 years ago. It's up much higher on this map. It, you know what? It might not even just be this here. It might be on the next. There's several waves of elevation that go up, and there's a, it's up there, right? So we stopped and doubled back to where at least the, the map was showing the entrance of this thing, because it should have been up and to the right as we were going up the main trail. 
the longer that it takes to find a cave, it delays the, uh, the push to the summit, and then you have the storms and the lightning factor, which is always a big concern for climbing. We come to the level where the cave is supposed to be and we're still not seeing it, so everybody's kind of looking around. Uh, we're not exactly sure where it is. It's hard to compare where, what elevation exactly are we at, where's the cave. We couldn't see it, there's a lot of snow. And so we split up and was looking for the cave. We just need to be careful about how we approach the search. In the back of my mind, I was thinking, is this what we're doing? But then I came to realize that the cave was not there on the trail. We had to go off the trail. It's a little bit scary uh, when you step off the trail. On the loose rock, uh, it's very, very dangerous. Uh, anything can happen there. I feel a little anxious because I haven't been on this particular mountain before. I don't know how stable the slopes are. I'm on this loose rock and I feel it's just about to give way. Is it safe? <laughs> I'm not sure. My climbers have trained for climbing. We know that there's risk. We've been in the mountains and had risk. I don't see how there'd be a cave up here. They said there is one, I guess there is one, but I'm not sure. Maybe over time, you know, the rocks sort of, you know, covered it. We looked all over for this cave. It was a lot of effort to find this, this shelter. I was thinking, do we really need a cave? The fact that all of this was in God's hands and um, you know, whatever providence would bring us, it would be prudent to roll with it. That was horrible. Yeah, I thought that it was, I thought it was quite possible that we weren't going to find this cave. No luck. Yeah, what fun, uh -uh. see nothing. Well, the good news is, on the good side, if we don't find the cave, we'll be the first people to bring a table to the top of the mountain. <laughs> 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 At least we get a tempt points, right? I think we need to go up a little higher. Real good. We'll find it. How about we pray? Sure. It was rough. The moment when uh, David asked us to say a prayer, uh, it was actually the right response. Prayer shouldn't be our last resort, but our first response. And our God. Give ear to my words, O oh Lord, give heed to my groaning. Whenever you want to do something big and special, you should uh, expect some kind of temptation. Temptations are overcome by patience, humility and faith. The Lord abhors bloodthirsty and deceitful men. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouth, their heart is destruction, their throat is an open sepulcher, they flatter with their tongue. Make them bear their guilt, O God, let them fall by their own counsels. Because of the many transgressions, cast them out. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. David suggested that he tries to find another spot I was worried at the time that we had missed our window. David was 200 yards off the trail. At 
as I was seeing him coming back from where he was trying to find a spot, I didn't know what he was going to say. Kind of his face was not giving me a clear answer. I was truly prepared to hear either answer because I trusted his judgments. It's a small cave. It's about three and a half, four foot wide. Well, the altar will fit perfectly against the wall. Excellent. And uh, we can serve a liturgy. It's really dangerous getting over there, guys. Yeah. It's really bad. I'm not too concerned about the cave, but getting there. We're going off the trail now, and I don't know if anyone's asking this question, so I'm going to ask that question. It's dangerous. You just have to take it easy. Just take your time. For me personally, I knew that it was a dangerous climb to take. But if we were going to serve the liturgy, then that was the cave we would have to serve it in because we didn't have any options at that point. What do you say, Dylan? Getting over there is going to be fun. Going off trail is kind of dangerous. Uh, it's, it's a good way to uh, slip and tumble down the side of the mountain. What do you say, George? I'm a little more concerned about coming back up. I was thinking in the back of my mind, are we going to do this? Are we going to have a liturgy? I mean, what do my men want to do? Well, we pray to God to do this, so we are ultimately in His hands. I started immediately walking towards that place because I knew time was of essence. Once Father Marco took off first, I was just trying to be behind him as close as I can, so my biggest concern was to look after him. At that point there, I began to believe this was actually going to happen, a holy divine liturgy. The cave that we're looking at is, was like a near vertical shaft in the mountain. The cave wasn't really large enough to fit the whole altar inside, so we sort of had it on the edge of it. We brought the church to the mountain. The beginning of every divine liturgy is the proscomedia. Part of that's the commemoration of the names of the living and the dead. All right, we're right here. Guys, it is time for you to tell me the names you want to pray for. Diana, Valery, Denise, Jeanne, Olga, Philippe. Pray for Brother Zachary. David loved his brother, and therefore, to this day, that love and worry has not left him. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Jesus Christ rose from the dead more than 2,000 years ago. And whenever we serve Divine Liturgy, we become participants of His resurrected, glorified life. Mitrofana Irineia i Kirila, da pomene Gospod Bogu carstvu svom, svakda sada i uvek, i uvekove vekova. This country and all those who live in it, especially those who are suffering, may the Lord our God remember in His kingdom, always, now and ever, 
and unto ages of ages. Send down thy most Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts here offered, and make this bread the precious body of thy Christ, <coughs> and that which is in this cup the precious blood of thy Christ, Amen. making the change by thy Holy Spirit. Amen. That they may be to those who partake for the purification of soul, for the remission of sins, for the communion of thy Holy Spirit, for the fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> When um, we receive of Holy Communion, we become one with uh, the Holy Trinity. Tielo Christovo primite Istočnika besmrtnogo kusite Tielo Christovo primite Istochnika besmrtnogo the service was was transcendent. It was a powerful thing to take communion on the side of a mountain. It was uh, as a dream uh, to serve Holy Divine Liturgy and and now being back to where it kind of began again uh, to take in a new climber Bato and and um, to bring Father Marco up onto this this location. It was, um, well, it was kind of like finishing something that we had started. There are certain divine liturgies that you keep in special remembrance and that you can never forget. This one was certainly one of them. May God bless you, keep you, and protect you unto ages of ages. Amen. We accomplished something. We accomplished something really significant. We accomplished something for our community, for ourselves. Boy, was I tired. And I kind of wanted to eat something, too. <laughs> After the service was over, we definitely uh, indulged in a lot of water. So. <laughs> Having a liturgy up there on the side of a mountain, that's God's cathedral. That liturgy in the cave on the side of Mount Blanca was definitely one of the most important services that I've experienced in my life. We had very little time to peak. So we took our banners and we climbed to the peak of Mount Blanca. Let's just take our energy and positively to the top. As we were arriving to the summit of Mount Blanca, it gave me a special feeling. Such goodness and positivity came from praying for Zachary specifically. David was the real initiator of these mountain climbing trips and, in my opinion, the soul of the group. Did it! Yeah! Woo! Did it! There you go. Congratulations, I would like to say that taking on this journey, climbing this mountain, would have to be one of the highlights of my life. I would like to do this as the years go on with my brother as well. Yeah, what started is 
essentially Zach's death and coming up here and serving the liturgy and being up here with these men, it has a very heavy and, and, and big meaning. Gotta hold on to my brother, it's a memory. You made it. The beautiful thing about him doing this, that we are so proud of him, is that um, he focused on something positive. I mean, we could do other things that are very destructive um, in behavior and, and lifestyle, but he focused on a good. Woo! Good job, guys. This spiritual mountain climbing venture has truly changed lives. We have no choice but to keep putting one foot in front of the other and moving upwards towards God. Sometimes you slip, sometimes you fall. And you hope you have brothers there to pick you up and help you along the way. this trip has made them more aware of who God is, what his creation is all about. It has made them love their families more, love God more, and love themselves more. We live in a particular time and place when we're part of a particular culture and we inhabit bodies, we're material beings. So we, we need things to peg beliefs to and practices to, that's why we have ritual. Sing my praise, hallelujah. Those traditions handed on serve as vehicles for something bigger and more important. Now we have some young guys joining our group and I think it's a great thing because they're very motivated, they're pushing our abilities. And we still plan to continue on climbing the highest peaks that we possibly can within our abilities. destined to climb, to ascend, and never to stagnate. We're very excited for whatever the next mountain may be.